Welcome to the University of Minnesota Nanofabrication Center Critical Point Dryer Video Short Course. The Critical Point Dryer, or CPD, is used in MEMS processing. During the beam release step, the CPD can be used to minimize stiction. Stiction is what happens when beams become stuck to the substrate. This occurs during the beam release step. Beams are attracted to the substrate by capillary forces. This causes the beams to bend down and become stuck to the substrate. This is an example of some stuck and unstuck polybeams. The CPD consists of a chamber and a condenser to the right of the machine. Behind the CPD in the chase are two liquid CO2 tanks. The liquid CO2 is slowly increased in temperature and pressure until the supercritical region has been reached. There is no distinct difference between the liquid and vapor phase in this region. This lack of interface allows the CO2 to be slowly bled off without breaking any beams or causing stiction. There are two main restrictions when using the CPD. The first is what cannot go into the chamber. No acetone, acid, or water can go into the chamber. These will damage the CPD. The second is no vacuum grease on the O-ring. The O-ring is made of Teflon in order to handle the high pressures which the chamber will reach. The chamber is never under vacuum. Before using the CPD, verify there is enough liquid CO2 in the tanks behind the machine. The CPD log sheet has a place where the amount of CO2 remaining in the tanks can be calculated. Take the logbook and go into the chase. Record the tear and actual weights for both the cool and chamber tanks. If the difference in tank weight is 30 pounds or less, the CPD can be used. If the difference is higher than 30 pounds, do not use the CPD. Contact the NFC staff member responsible for the equipment. When the tanks have been changed, the run can be continued. The next step is preparing the samples with the following rinse steps. If a sample has been exposed to HF, it needs to be rinsed for several minutes in three to four different water baths. Each bath will remove any remaining residual HF. The sample then goes to the final rinse step before using the CPD. This last step eliminates any water from the sample. Rinse the sample for several minutes in three to four different solvent baths. The solvents allowed for this last step are ethanol, methanol, or isopropyl alcohol. If the samples have not been exposed to HF, they can skip the water rinse and go right to the final rinse. Leave the samples soaking in the last final rinse bath until ready to be placed in the CPD. Exposure to air should be minimized. Go to the purge timer and select the amount of time to purge the chamber with liquid CO2. The amount of time will depend on how full the chamber is filled with solvent. Each number represents a 5 minute time increment. A typical purge time will be between 10 and 25 minutes. There are also metering valves around the lid. These are set to specific values that should not be adjusted. To turn on the machine, go to the right side and flip the power switch to on. Push the vent button. It should start blinking. Loosen the nuts on the lid in a star pattern. Loosen one nut, then the opposite nut. Carefully lift the lid off the chamber and place it to the right of the machine. The chamber can fit anywhere from a 6 inch wafer to a 1 cm square piece using the correct insert. The inserts reduce the size of the chamber volume to minimize the amount of solvent needed for the run. The holder holds the wafer or piece in place. If desired, each holder can hold multiple wafers using the spacers provided with the system. The piece holder also can accommodate several pieces at a time. This is an example of the 4-inch wafer insert with a 4-inch wafer holder inside of it. 
the total chamber volume has been reduced. The next images are of all the wafer inserts inside the chamber with the piece holder in the center. The chamber volume has been reduced to a bare minimum. To use the CPD, place the correct wafer insert inside the chamber. Pour just enough solvent in to cover your wafer. Remove the sample from the last rinse step and quickly put it in the wafer holder and set the holder inside the chamber. Verify solvent completely covers the wafer. Minimize any exposure to air. It is permissible to load the wafer into the holder during the last rinse step. Remember, only ethanol, methanol, or isopropyl alcohol are approved solvents for the CPD. Minimizing the amount of solvent in the chamber and using the correct purge time will make sure all the solvent is removed during the run. Place the lid on the chamber and hand tighten the nuts in a star pattern. Using the spanning wrench, tighten each nut 15 degrees in a star pattern. Repeat this twice to make sure all nuts are tight. Press the cool button to allow liquid CO2 to circulate in the unit. This will cool the chamber down to a temperature between 0 and 10 degrees Celsius. The CO2 can be heard circulating in the chamber. Once the temperature has reached between 0 and 10 degrees Celsius, press the fill button. This step is 8 minutes long while liquid CO2 fills the chamber. From this point on, the run is automatic until the vent step when it is time to unload the samples. During the purge step, the solvent in the chamber is purged to the condenser unit. The amount of time is determined by the purge timer. The post-purge fill step fills the chamber for an additional 4 minutes. During the heating step, temperature and pressure increases to the supercritical region. It remains there for 4 minutes. If the chamber does not reach at least 1350 PSI, contact a NFC staff member. Turn the machine off until assistance arrives. During the bleed step, the pressure will slowly bleed out of the chamber. If the pressure bleeds off too quickly, any freed beams may break. When the vent button is lit, the system is returning to normal pressure inside the chamber. Loosen the nuts using the spanning wrench. Return all inserts, holders, and spanning wrench to the CPD toolbox. Empty the solvent from the condenser unit. Place the hose in the solvent waste jug. Open the valve to release the solvent. Close the valve and place the lid back on the solvent waste jug. Clean up all rinse beakers in the area. Place the lid back on the chamber. Loosely place the nuts back on the bolts. The run is now completed. Narrated by Becky Van Dissen. Directed and edited by Suzanne Miller. When the vent button is lit, 
The system is returning to normal pressure inside the chamber. Loosen the nuts using the spanning wrench. Remove samples. Return all inserts, holders, and spanning wrench to the CPD toolbox. Empty the solvent from the condenser unit. Place the hose in the solvent waste jug. Open the valve to release the solvent. Close the valve. Clean up all rinse beakers in the area. Place the lid back on the chamber. Loosely place the nuts back on the bolts. The run is now completed. Narrated by Becky Von Dissen. Directed and edited by Suzanne Miller.